Hello everyone, welcome along to this uh, members only uh, webinar, our new tools wishlist and uh, training webinar. So uh, welcome along guys, thanks for taking the time to, to come along. Um, this webinar is all about just going through uh, all the new features that we've uh, launched in 2019 and uh, can't believe we're already uh, in September but we've uh, definitely uh, have uh, released quite a fair number of uh, features and tools so we'll, we'll go through that just to make sure that uh, everyone uh, is aware of uh, what features and what uh, tools you do have access to that might make your uh, <clears throat> your use of our platform much more effective and, and efficient in helping you uh, be able to obviously secure the right investment property as quickly as possible so well we've just got a couple of slides that we'll go through just to introduce those uh, those those features and then we'll actually go jump in and I'll show you how to access them, what they mean, how you can take advantage of them, depending on what strategy that you're uh, you're focusing on. All right, so welcome along. If you do have any questions, guys, feel free to just type it into the uh, the chat section there on your GoToWebinar console. I'll uh, look. I'll try to make this as interactive as as, as possible and answer any questions as we go along. Um, but look, we'll, as always, we'll have some time at the end as well. Um, but um, yeah, look, if you um, haven't had a chance to uh, complete the survey, <coughs> excuse me, um, I'd have to send the link out there as well, uh, just on the chat there. So feel free to uh, 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 click on that and, and fill it in as you, as you go. We really want to get your feedback in terms of what other features you want to see or what other tools, data that will help you be able to uh, maximize your, uh, your ability to do your research more effectively to help you uh, build your property portfolios. Now, for those that have just joined the real estate investor community, just a very quick introduction. My name's Dennis Wong. I'm the uh, product specialist here. I've been working uh, for Investor now for a little bit over five years, uh, five and a half years now. I've been using the platform, uh, both obviously um, at a work level, but also personally as well. So my experience is more in the renovation and positive cash flow space. So if you're not sure or if you just joined the community, um, now we do obviously work with a lot of different partners out there and we, we do tend to uh, work with you know, um, uh, players or, or, or companies that are, speci that are specialists or leaders in, the, in their space. So um, we do partner with PriceFinder and CoreLogic uh, for our market research uh, data. So we've been with PriceFinder for, for quite a number of years and APM, they used to be known as Australian Property Monitors. So that's where you can get your desktop or request for your desktop valuation estimates, look at suburb sales data, rental data, suburb history, median prices, days on market, auction clearance rates, demographics, all that information to you know to help you assess any deals that you may find through investor search to see if the if it actually stacks up. So we now also partner with CoreLogic RP Data. Uh, we offer that as a bundled membership, so a little bit different to PriceFinder where you do have to add that on as a separate. Um, um, uh, membership. Uh, so we're, we, we now partner with um, best, the best of both worlds. I mean, look, both those platforms are used quite heavily in, by the big banks, property valuers, mortgage brokers, real estate agents. So it's giving you guys as investors um, access to the same same information. Um, it's all government verified data, which is which is great from a sales point of view, sales data point of view. And we've also partnered with Archistar as well. So they uh, specialize in a software platform which I'll show you tonight if you haven't seen some of the webinars that we've already run uh, for those that are looking at development or subdivisions really allow you to quickly identify a site and see what its development potential is you know uh, how many uh, how much how many lots you can subdivide it to any overlay zoning that you need to be aware of all that information in one easy location so what's new in 2019 so what have we released so far this year so We've got a number of features in Investor Search alone. So that's our unique searching platform. So this is where we currently look at or pull listings from 20 property portals in Australia. So, you know, things like Domain, LJ Hooker, All Homes, uh, even, you know, seller sites or self-seller self sites like buymyplace.com.au or Gumtree. And we bring them all through the one platform. And we obviously remove duplicate listings where we can, you know, if, if the address matches. Um, and it just allows you to search a lot faster because of all the extra filters that we have. So we've done a lot of work in the background um, in terms of uh, more frequent update of property listings. 
So for those that have been around for a while now with us, you would notice now that we don't have as many uh, old sold listings. That was always a big issue because um, you know agents don't necessarily remove listings um, quite quickly. You know they actually tend to use old listings as a good way to um, get leads for other properties that perhaps aren't selling too well. So you know they'll put a property that's that leave a property um, on the on the web, um, not updating as under contract or sold. They know there's been a lot of demand. Get more, to, you know, inquiries come through. They'll call them and say, "Hey, sorry, it's sold, but I've got another property similar, which may not be performing as well." So it's a good, it is a good lead generation way. But obviously, from an investor point of view, it's a, it's a bit of a waste of time if uh, you know it's already if it's already gone. So we've been doing a lot of work in that space, being able to cross check with other multiple websites to see if you know if one says it's it's under contract and the other ones haven't updated, we can we can do quick cross checks like that. So uh, a lot of work been done in the background, um, which probably from um, you know, from a, I guess, user experience point of view, you, you probably can see a bit of, but it's not as obviously obvious as a new new fields. So we've been able to add a median li listing price filter. So we've never had this before where you can quickly do a search to say, hey, only show me properties in suburbs where the median listing price is under $500,000. So a good way to target uh, more affordable suburbs. Um, so, you know, looking at uh, suburbs only that are selling around that half a million dollar mark um, or high 400s, and then you can apply the percentage of the suburb median filter, you know, if you're looking at renovations, to find you something at least 20% below that. So you want to find something that's for sale around that 400K, 380K mark, give you an opportunity to renovate, get an uplift, revalue around that 500, maybe a little bit more, where you can then appeal to a bigger pool of buyers that, you know, can afford that half a million dollar mark. So a good way to identify those types of suburbs. Vacancy rate, a really exciting one. So, you know, whether you're renovating or just buying and holding long term um, and looking at uh, high cash flow, finding a suburb with a low vacancy rate is much easier now because we've actually got that filter. So, you know, they generally say 3% is a represents a balanced market, you know, good level of demand, good number of uh, stock available for rent. So anything lower is going to be better. So you've got the ability now to say, hey, only show me those suburbs where the vacancy rate's at least 2% or 2% max, okay, nothing higher. Extra options added to the bedroom count. So now we've, um, now this was due to um, a lot of requests for those looking at doing boarding, boarding houses where they were looking for existing uh, dwellings, perhaps that had a minimum of 15 bedrooms, 20 bedrooms. Um, so we've been able to add that. I think we've got up to 30, 40, 50 even, I think, but we'll have a look in, a, in the demo in a sec. Um, so we've got those options now, making it a lot easier to find those, those types of uh, those properties. Whereas before, I think the max was just uh, 10, which, which, you know, if you were looking for a much, much bigger uh, property, it makes it a little bit difficult. Two lots on one title keywords now added to the subdivision strategy filter. So uh, for those that may have uh, heard of uh, widow blocks or two lots of one title where it's just a boundary realignment, a very a much more, I guess, um, less intense subdivision. Um, we've now added all those keywords that uh, we find agents will use that may indicate that property is two lots of one title. Daily email, email alerts for new listings only. So what you can do now is when you set a daily, uh, your email alert to daily, if you set the listing age to a maximum one day, you will only be sent an email of any listings that meet your criteria. So it just saves clogging up your inbox. So if there's no deals uh, for the day, then you won't get an email alert. Planning and zoning data. So with our through our partnership with Archistar, we've been able to pull some data uh, from the um, uh, new, new um, fantastic system and made that available to all our members uh, of our pro membership for no extra cost. So we've just been able to pull the land use potential. So whether the you know a property is listed for sale, where either you can potentially build a duplex, townhouse or apartments on it, or whether it can be used as a, a mixed use site. Uh, the zoning, so is it medium density, low density, um, you know, a medium to high density, and also uh, any overlays. So is there a character heritage overlay, flooding, uh, bushfire hazard, uh, is it under an air, you know, close to an airport, there's restrictions on what you can do to the roof, things like that. That's all available right next to every every single listing where there's data available. 
So what else is new? So we've got a couple of new partnerships as well. So we've got now partnered with CoreLogic RP Data, like I mentioned. So we've now, for those uh, members that have uh, upgraded to what we call now the Pro Plus membership to have RP Data included, uh, it's now available through My Value My Research. You simply click that button and your membership will take you to the, uh, the login page of RP Data. Um, you can also download the RP Data Pro app. So if you're not aware of that, guys, and you're already using uh, Investor with RP Data, whether you're using Android or an Apple device, download the Pro uh, uh, RP Data Pro app. Fantastic app. I use it myself. It's, it, in my opinion, it's actually probably better than the desktop version at the moment. But their um, RP Data are actually doing some upgrades and working on a new interface. They want to obviously modernize it a little bit um, and probably get it more in line with what the app the app can do or what the app looks like. So really, really cool tool. It's a bundled membership with Investar. So uh, just you know, one invoice, one bill with Investar. We, we manage it all. You can get access to both Investar and RP Data for one fee. It's national access. So uh, no need to uh, upgrade to pay state by state. To, uh, you will actually be able to search on any property, uh, any property type uh, throughout the whole country. So we look, it's quite similar to Price Finder. It's probably got a few couple of different uh, features, which I'll go through in the uh, the demo uh, in a couple of minutes' time. But you can see here, this is really a, the, the main reports you can run. You've got the an AVM valuation report, which is similar. Well, it is what the banks run. It's a desktop valuation estimate. Uh, it, it is more conservative. So that's what the bank use. A property report is what you what I guess you and I would use. You know, it will give you a desktop valuation estimate more in line with what's actually happening in the market. Okay. Uh, otherwise, we've also got the signature CMA report. So this is used more by valuers and real estate agents, um, where it's, it requires more time. So it's not a desktop valuation. So it doesn't use the actual algorithm, a computer algorithm. You, as the user, actually define the criteria. So you can pick the actual comparables that you believe are like for like with your target property. You know, if you're looking at a property in a suburb where there's waterfront, there's obviously going to be a big discrepancy between prices if your property uh, is not waterfront. So with the signature CMA report, you can actually pick all the ones that are within your block or have no water frontage, no water views. So then the comparables are more like for like. Whereas the automated AVM and the property report, you can't distinguish that. An algorithm cannot tell if a property is waterfront or not, or if it's been renovated, the quality, so signature CMA is a little bit more powerful. Suburb report, suburb stats report, I'll show you that in, 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 shortly. Just gives you a good overview of what's happening in the area from a growth point of view, both from you know houses and units uh, on the market. So that's where you get all your uh, average days on market, how long it's taking properties to sell. So it's going to give you a good indication on the the uh, the suburb of health. You know, are properties moving quickly there? Are they taking a long time? So again, depending on your strategy, that's going to be valuable because it will help you to work out or forecast what your potential holding costs are going to be. You know, if you're renovating and selling, you know, you're going to have a time where you might have to hold it for one to two months until the property sells. Um, and, you'll, you know, you've got loan repayments during that time. So it'll help you forecast that sort of that sort of thing. Rental comparison, again, if you're holding, just get a rental estimate. You've probably seen these uh, from real estate agents anyway. Rental CMA, again, like the signature CMA, this time it does it for rentals. You pick like for like. Market compare, auction results, so quite straightforward there in terms of uh, what, what's what's presented there. It's just comparing what's happening in the market in terms of uh, the initial listed price versus what the current asking price is. So is there actually a drop? Is there a discounting happening in the area? Or are prices actually going up? Archistar. So our other partnership is uh, with Archistar, which is a, a, a new prop tech business uh, where you can quickly get access to zoning information and you know uh, how many townhouses can you build on this particular site. You can see that image there on the right. Um, you know different colours represent different uh, zoning. You know that sort of red there is medium density, green open space, the yellow is community facilities, the darker yellow will banana sort of colour, special purpose or special development areas. So really, really great feature to be able to get at a high level of an area you might be targeting. What's the zoning there like? So good if you're looking at off-market deals. You know, you can then add an extra filters like show me anything that's medium density, minimum minimum 800 square metres. Bam, and it shows you which lots, lots that they are. 
and then you can hop on over to uh, RP Data and have a look and do some research on when was the last time they sold, what's the likelihood they may sell uh, or put it on the market. So Archistar, regardless of what membership you're on, it's an op optional add-on for $99 a month, just a casual membership. Uh, it is a little bit different than going direct to Archistar. So ours is a customized version. It doesn't have all the all the features, but it has all the key features that you know we believe that uh, is sufficient in terms of doing your research. And I'll, I'll go through that. So zoning data, overlays, land use potential, uh, and then if you uh, obviously then subscribe, then you get access to building height restrictions, maximum site coverage percentage. So, you know, what percentage of that uh, that site uh, can actually be built on, you know, how much has to be um, available uh, actual land. You can quickly check the suitability for a granny flat. That's a really, really cool, uh, cool feature. And then you can search sites by land use potential, you know, which, which sites can I build a townhouse on, duplex on, uh, or apartments on. Uh, and you can calculate the land re residual amount as well. So that's a really cool report where you put in uh, user-defined filters like, you know, uh, the minimum lot size you can subdivide, how much it will cost you to build each townhouse, for example, how much can you sell them at, what are your uh, development costs, what are your closing costs, and then it will actually work out. And, and also, more importantly, what's the profit margin you're aiming for? Are you aiming for a 20% return, 25% return? Putting all that data in, it will then actually calculate what you should pay for this property. What is your price ceiling? So really, really cool. All right, so let's just go through some of this stuff more from a demo point of view and actually show you how to find it, how to use it, um, and hopefully that can help you. And obviously not everything might be relevant to you, depending on your strategy. All right, so let's go into Investor Search and cover some of these new, new filters and where they're located and uh, how you can take advantage of them. All right, now I may need to log back in again. Might have been, uh, might have kicked me out. No, no, here we go. Okay. So let's have a look at, say, uh, the bedroom count first. So for those looking at uh, bo uh, boarding houses, potentially um, up over here, you got the minimum. So, yep, it is 50. So you can see here, one, two, three, four, five, quite uh, stock standard. Then you've got 10, 15, 20, 30, 50. So you can quickly uh, find potential properties with a high bedroom count. So let's just say we'll do 20, 20 rooms. Let's just do say Queensland and we'll hit search. All right, so it goes off and uh, searches across those property portals and here we go, 38 matches. So here we go, what says 4.5 mil, surface paradise, block, 21 bedrooms. All right, so Looks like a full block of nine units, so the whole block's actually for sale. So that's not so much a boarding house or rooming house. So it says Tawong, inner city Brisbane, entire building for sale. Okay, so look, look uh, probably the other thing I forgot to mention, also is it good for searching boarding houses, but blocks of units. Um, so you might even be able to find a block of unit that you could potentially strata title. So a great way to manufacture equity. You know, uh, all units are actually on one title. So depending on the zoning and uh, the legal requirements of that area, you might be able to actually strata tie them and then sell them all off separately, or maybe keep one or two and, and sell the rest off. So that's the other thing, the other um, option you can use the bedroom count for. Okay, let me go back. So let me reset all my filters. So the two lots on one title keywords, guys. Uh, so under subdivision here. Now, obviously, if you just leave it on all, and we click on more strategy options underneath it. We've got all the keywords listed here as well. But if we just go pick subdivide, it makes it a lot easier. So if we go unselect all. So if you're only looking at splitter blocks, guys, like actual two lots on one title, you can just go and tick those different variations. Okay, obviously agents uh, on one title, on two lots. Okay, and then we've got the obviously all spelt out and then right down the bottom as well. So let's just do a radius search of Brisbane. So we'll just go say 25Ks of Brisbane's postcode 4000 and we'll hit search. This will allow you to quickly identify these types of lots that are currently on the market. So 64 of them. All right, as we know, you know, for those that live in Brisbane, we know, usually know that uh, any, eight, you know, an 810 square metre block is what you can split. Now, this is probably going to cost quite a fair bit to demolish quite a big house there. So, um, but if we go have a look at one, say in Hendry here, 820, asking 580, median listing 700, 
open up the ad. There we go, character and potential on two lots. Okay, so quite while we're here, so some of the other new 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 features that we've added here. So if I scroll down, so median listing price, we've always had that. It's always been displayed in this uh, table here, but the ability to search by it's been added. So I'll show that to you in a second, but here's your vacancy rate. All right, so again, we've always had the vacancy rate, but we've never been able to allow you to search it. We, we, we do now. Here's the uh, planning and uh, zoning data from Archistar that comes through. So we can see CR1 character zoning overlay. Okay, so definitely something to be aware of if you're looking at renovating or if you are going to demolish it, can you actually do it to demolish it? And if you are renovating it, how does that affect, you know, your ability to um, modify the facade of the property, you know? So very, very important. Land use not available, so not enough data. And then we can see some overlays here too. Airport, critical infrastructure, dwelling house character, traditional building character as well. So if you did have access to Archistar, there is a link here, you know, log into your Archistar account, so you can click in and then obviously you can do more research um, through there. All right, so that's your two lots and one title. Okay, so let's go back. All right, so I scroll down a bit. All right, let me just expand all the uh, the available fields. So we don't have, you know, a hundred uh, different fields. You know, there's only a few. Um, so here's the summer median listing price. All right, so this is where you can say, only show me, you know, whatever search criteria you put in and then set the maximum of, you know, say half a million dollars for a median listing price. Okay, and then there's your vacancy rate just below uh, over the bottom line here, and you can set whatever vacancy rate you want. Okay, so if I sort of combine all this, so let's just keep it there's two lots on one title. Actually, let me let's, let's, we'll do a renovation because renovation I can apply more filters that are going to be relevant. Okay, so we'll do a radius search again. So let's just do Brisbane. We'll go 50 k's, postcode 4000. We'll go renovate. Okay, I'm only interested in houses, so I'll just pick the property type as house. Now, let me expand the filters. So I only want vacancy rate less than, say, 2%. I want a property or house that's priced at least 20% below the median listing. So we set it at 80. Okay, so you've got to sort of work it in reverse if it makes sense. So if the median listing price is a, a million a million dollars, at 80%, it means it's only going to show me properties listed at $800,000 or less. All right, so think of a bell curve. A million dollars is the, mi the middle point and then uh, 800,000 is that 20% below. And then we want to say, but, but I only want it in a suburb where the median is not more than half a million. Okay, hit search. So look, some of these new filters, just it just makes it easier to try and identify suburbs where it's lower risk and you're gonna you know, be able to get a better return on your investment. You know, just extra, these extra layers of data that help you determine, you know, whether a property is great or whether it's, you know, it's going to be a, a, a dud investment. All right, obviously with a few filters here. All right, so we've got 37 there. All right, straight away, I can tell agent has listed this as a house, but it's a townhouse. Yeah, I hate that. Uh, you, you know, 7D, so skip that. Forest Lake, asking 299 here. Okay, pretty small, small small uh, block there, so I'll skip that. Upper Coomera on the Gold Coast. Let's just have a look to see if there's a sort of a big gap in terms of the median listing. So we're all sort of in the 70s, 80s. Let's go to the next page. So we've got a few Gold Coast ones there. I might have to reduce the uh, radius. A little dip switch. All right, well, we'll just here, we'll just pick this one here. So Ellen Grove, 250 asking price. 728 square meter block, 67.3% media listing. And there's the media listing there, 371. Open up the ad. All right, so this one's actually already fully renovated. So you can see the keywords there. All right, but you can see in terms of the filters, vacancy rate 1.8%. So it's lower than the uh, my target. Low density residential. I could potentially build duplex or townhouses there. So, okay, so I might not be able to renovate it, but maybe I could develop on it. Maybe this property is not the highest and best use of this site, and I might be able to buy it for 250, maybe a little bit less. Maybe the uh, owners doesn't know that uh, you can do extra stuff to it, uh, or improve it, or have higher density, and you might be able to get a bargain and uh, uh, get uh, um, a development out of it as well. All right, so from here, the other thing that we can do was the uh, email alerts. So 
you know, you can either do it here by click on save this search up the top here, or back on the actual investor search homepage. We have save this search. So if you're wanting the daily email alert, where you only want to get an email if a new listing meets your, oh sorry, if any listings meet your criteria, more under the property section here, listing age, just change it from the default of 12 months to one day, and then hit save this search, and give it a name, whatever you like, and then over here, just change that from inactive to daily. Okay, hit save search. And next time you log in, click on My Safe Searches and your list of safe searches are here. So if you want to run the search, instead of having to manually go and put in all the filters again, you can just click on it and it'll run it. But if you want to remove it or you want to edit any of the filters, you know, edit your email alert frequency or whatever you want to do, you can, you can do it through here. All right, so that's investor search. So any questions, guys, feel free to type it in, but uh, I'll keep moving along. There hasn't been any questions yet. So my value, my research. So that's um, for those that are utilizing our new bundled package, by clicking on that, that'll take you through to RP data. And this is what it looks like now. All right, so you can remember the uh, screenshot before I had, there's your different activities. So if you're only coming in and requesting for a specific uh, report, you can click on it and then follow the, the prompts. Um, email alerts or active alerts this is really cool as well. So if you want to be notified if a property is listed for sale, becomes uh, available for rent or is sold, uh, you can simply add it to, the, to your watch list. So you can see I've got a watch list here. So if I just click into a property. So really good if you perhaps you've... Um, you try to get an off-market sale, you want you try to approach the owner, they're not interested, but you know they may put it on the market and you want to be first in. As soon as it hits the, the, the internet or it's, uh, it's, it becomes available, you get notified. So it may give you an opportunity to get in before everyone else does. All right, so to add it to your watch list, when you're in the actual property uh, report or property detail, under the property tasks here, so similar to that homepage, there is an option here that basically says, uh, where is it? Uh, add to watch list. But, ah, okay, so it's not there because I've already added there. So you can see here, it's uh, it's already watching. Otherwise, you'll have a, an actual button there. All right, you can just click on it, it will add it to your watch list. So, um, let me go back. So you can, similar to, you know, um, price finder, as soon as the property is sold, if the agent reports it, you'll see the price. It comes up in a different different color. You can uh, customize these uh, graphs to be relevant to an area that perhaps you're looking at. All right, so just click on the uh, suburb statistics heading and then put in whatever suburb you want. All right, and then that graph will default to uh, your area of interest. But really to start searching, guys, you simply just start typing in an address. All right. Any uh, any any property anywhere ac across the country includes commercial. All right, so we can see here. See how that's in purple, last sale price? Okay, that means the agent's reported it. It's been picked up, but it hasn't settled yet. So that price may change. But once it goes black, that means the uh, the, the titles office for that state has verified that sale. It, ha it has settled. All right, so probably the only thing I'll point out is listing history here, really, really important. Can actually see how long it's been on the market for. So if we open up the detail, you know, if they've changed prices, so you can see this one here, originally asking 775. First National was the uh, first agent, Russell Barker was trying to sell it, didn't move it in June, decided to change and then went to Ray White. Office over 699, still didn't sell, they changed it to 620, 660, and they eventually sold it for 600. So really good for those that are perhaps you're just new to uh, the investing market really good to help you with your negotiation, you know, understanding how long it's actually been on the market for, um, how motivated the, the sellers may be. Arun just asked, how many properties can you put on the watch list? There's no limit, uh, Arun, as far as I'm aware. So um, yeah, you can put as many on there as you want. Probably a good tip, if you're looking at blocks of units, um, or you wanna be notified of any unit, is, 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 is um, or you wanna be alerted of any activity of, of a unit of a block, you don't have to actually add every single unit. You can just put in the actual address for the whole block. All right, and then any unit then gets listed for sale or for rent, you'll get notified. 
All right. So the interface is quite, yeah, it looks a bit dated, but look, it's really, really powerful in terms of the data. But if you actually, the core logic are actually now um, uh, building a new interface and you can actually click on the blue button there, try it now on the top. And it looks obviously much more modern, much more user friendly. Uh, but they're still working on obviously including all the features, but it has most of it there already anyway. Uh, like I mentioned, download the uh, RP Data Pro app and uh, you'll have access to to basically the new interface anyway, or what it's going to look like. Yeah, hopefully they haven't uh, taken it down for maintenance, <laughs> but um, it usually doesn't take this long. All right, while that's loading, I'll show you some uh, reports. Oh, here we go, here it comes up. All right, so you can see there, much more cleaner. All right, you simply just put in an address. Okay, and then it will load up your property report. So you can see it's much more interactive. You have more things sort of on screen at the same time, it makes it a little bit easier. All right, so it looks like they may be having an issue at the moment. I'll just try it one more time. All right, so you've got your map on the right. You can then add your layers on it, you know, sales, prices, you get your photos on your left. Property history, sales, listing, rental, etc. All there. Owner details, in this case, Queensland will have it. Household information, so who the owners are. Valuation, desktop, desktop valuation estimates, and rental estimates. So just a little bit, more, you know, more cleaner. Nearby schools and similar similar sales, and you can obviously click on view on map as well, and uh, it will show you all those properties on a map. Pretty cool. Interactive, you can click on it and obviously get the information that you need. Okay, so some of the cool reports that you can run, let me just uh, open them up. So the suburb report, all right, so it just gives you an idea, a bit of a suburb health check on, on the area, if you're not familiar with it, what's happening. So you can see some demographic data, so it's gonna that's gonna help you determine, you know, dep again, depending on your strategy, who's your, who's your customer? You know, what sort of product do you want to buy to ensure that you're going to get it rented at the best price or you're going to get the best sale price for it? So just understanding demographics, you know, is there a lot of children or young kids, families? You know, so having a house with a, a bathtub or a small bathtub is going to be ideal. You know, just little things like that. Uh, number of dwellings in the area, listings, median value. Uh, gives you a, I'll just zoom in there, gives you a breakup in terms of the uh, lower quartile, median price and upper quartile. So that's really powerful in terms of understanding, okay, well, um, what is the, uh, the, the the variance between those those gaps? Uh, are they big enough for you to be able to do a renovation? Okay. Um, so this just breaks it up then by houses and, and then also units. Okay. All right, so that's the, the suburb report. Then we've got the on the market report. So this is really cool. So the report, this one here is 31 pages. So I've gone through, s selected the, my relevant criteria. Um, and I'm looking in this case, this report's on Burley Head. So it gives you all the uh, itemized, all the properties that match your criteria. But right at the end, this is really cool. So what it does is it gives me a summary. So based off all the properties that I've selected, I think it's 94 of them, the average days it took those properties or average days on mark was 142. Okay, but that's across houses and units. Okay, you can see then uh, re-advertise, you can see uh, auctions, and you, it breaks it up then by your lowest, most expensive, the median, and the average. All right, really, really powerful. Scrolling down, it then breaks up the average days on market by price range and by property type. So even more powerful, understanding which properties or which price range sell faster. Now, as you can see with houses, not a big data sample, you know, everything's under four. Uh, so the average number of days, you know, those, you know, this one here, one sale between eight to eight ninety nine k, three hundred and fifty one days. You know, that could be a, a massive acreage at the back of Burley Heads. So I don't know, or a mansion. Um, so you really need to dive down deeper and find out what what that is, or get more data. But with the units, you can see that you know, you got over ten sales here. Uh, but you know, looks like uh, seven seven ninety nine. 98 days, they, don't, they actually don't sell too bad. So what, why is that? Are they a waterfront or whatnot? Um, and then you've got you know, 69, but not many, only three units in that 300 and 400K mark. 
So that's where you can get your days on market and it just breaks, it just summarizes that just so much quicker, so much faster. And then your rental comparison. So similar to a sales, but this is now just doing rentals. So if you're holding property and you're, you're looking at a cash flow or rental return, again, gives you an itemized list of all the properties that you've picked. And then at the end, it will give you a summary, show you by bedroom count, cheapest rent, highest rent, median average, and then the average number of days it takes to rent a property. So how cool is that? Really works out, again, helps you determine, okay, should I be looking at three or four bedrooms? You know, if I'm renovating, a, um, you know, if we have a look here, we've got a three bed house, median's 432, but a four bed, 600. And if you've got a study, um, is it worth just changing that to a fourth bedroom because the rent then jumps up significantly? Okay, so there's a pretty big gap there. All right, so there's some of the key reports from CoreLogic RP data. Okay, uh, Arun's just asked, if your plan includes uh, development applications, a filter to time for DA approval would be very helpful. Uh, is that coming? A filter to time for DA approval. Um, I'm not, I, I don't really understand what you mean, Arun, so if you can just give me a little bit more info on what you mean by that, I could um, uh, just confirm or, or, or deny whether that is coming or whether it's even on our development pipeline, and if not, I can add it to uh, to that pipeline. Blacktown takes nine months. Ah, oh, okay. So you want to get an idea on how long it how long it takes council to approve a an application. Others take six to eight weeks. Wow, that's a big, big, uh, big difference in timing. Um, yeah, look, we I haven't we haven't got that in our pipeline. Not that I recall when we um, had our last meeting. That wasn't something that we had been requested before, Arun. So uh, yeah, look, I'll make a note of that. But um, if you can actually email that through or, or fill in that survey, that, that way we've got a written record as well that's come from you directly. Um, and put in as much detail as well as, uh, you know, is there anything else you want apart from just the time frame? Uh, that will help us obviously make sure that we develop it and uh, um, give you exactly what you need. Have requested before by email. Okay, I'll double check. Uh, I don't recall seeing that one though. Okay, so Archistar is the other uh, partnership that we've uh, introduced recently. Let me just close this down. All right, so go back to the main menu. So I'll click on Archistar. Now I've got it uh, turned on, so it will automatically log me in. No, it won't. So let me just click sign in. Okay, so with our version of Archistar, so I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with Archistar, but um, you know Archistar retails at something like $299 per month. So it's not a, um, a, a cheap product, but it's a very definitely a very powerful product. So with ours, we don't we don't have access to near maps, we don't have the add-ons, you can't do uh, 3D modeling or anything like that. So, uh, but what we can do is I'll, I'll show you. So you can search any property. Uh, so it is it is national access, but um, obviously more from the, in the metro point of view, uh, in the you know really really regional areas, there's going to be not much data there. Um, but you know if we go to a property, then you can see how this builds on the data that we've got from Investor Search. So we can see the zoning here, the lot area, the land use potential. So you can see tick 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 potentially yeah you can build those maybe, but you still obviously got to check with the council regulations. Definitely no mixed use, and then your planning details. So maximum dwelling density. All right, so it's saying, you know, uh, if we're going to subdivide it, then each lot must has to be between, between 133, 400 square metres, maximum building height, 23 metres, minimum subdivision area, 125 to 600 square metres. Okay, click on see more. Sometimes you might be able to get some extra info. In this case, just the uh, primary road setback. Okay, go back. There's your overlays. Now, there may be additional overlays because sometimes we, uh, Archistar can't pull in everything if it's not displayed in a, in a particular way in council, but we give you the links anyway, or the references down here where you can go direct to the actual uh, planning code or the uh, the actual zoning information. So you can click on it and go straight there and read through and find out exactly what those requirements are. All right, so every council is different. So Gold Coast is that's actually a, a map. So I'll just, I'll just show it just to give you an idea. So let me just get that address. I do know this is a little bit slow. Here we go. All right, I'm sure a lot of you have probably tried to navigate through council websites. They're always different, so it can be quite uh, a bit of a mission to try and find what you're looking for. 
All right, so there it is there. So I click on that and we'll go and look at the city plan report. All right, so you can see here, gives me then all the links. I can find out exactly what those overlays are, click through into it. What's this uh, you know, priority infrastructure area? Uh, acid sulfate soils, I can click into it and it'll take me to the actual, the actual plan, the coding. Okay. All right, so what else can we do in here? So on the map, you can zoom in, zoom out, right? I can then turn on filters. So I can say, all right, well, in this area, where can I build a townhouse? Put in townhouse. Okay, so it highlights all those those lots that it thinks I can build a townhouse. Let me just zoom out a little bit more. All right, search for a zone. All right, but I only really want medium density and lot size minimum at least 800 square meters. All right, and it removes a lot of a lot of sites. Right. All right, from here. Okay, I've identified some potential sites, but then let's just say I want to make sure I want to avoid any flood areas or be close to any flood prone areas. So you can see now big flood, flood layer up appears. Bushfire, turn that on. So you can see there, a lot of greenery around there, obviously. So big, big uh, fire zone there. And heritage, turn that on. I don't think anything's popped up. Oh yeah, one thing popped up, so over here in the green space, I'll just turn it off and turn it back on so you can see it. So see this green space here, there a little a building will turn on heritage and a building will pop up. So pretty powerful, right? You can just quickly go and have a look around, move around the map and identify those areas quite quickly. Uh, questions just come through, can you filter to avoid sites sloping to the rear? No, at the moment you can't. Um, so it doesn't take you, yeah, you can't search by slope. Um, the all the slope, I guess, measurements or angles aren't actually mapped onto uh, onto here. Okay, so what else can we do? So let me just turn the filters off. All right, so like I said, you can search for property. So let me just go back into this one here, uh, which site? This this site here. So we can see quite quickly. You know, next door to this site looks like there's four townhouses, or you know, there's been a subdivision that's occurred there. So what you can do here is then go. Click on estimate, and we can go. All right, I want to look at building a potentially townhouses, and so for each of these options, duplex, townhouse, apartment, mixed use, you can then set some defaults. Hit defaults, and then you can say, all right, well, land use efficiency, I want to use 80%. Average lot size, I've got is 130 square meters per lot. Average gross floor area, 170 square meters. So you know, the same proposing two-story townhouses. Average sale per townhouse, 570k. Average cost. Let's just say 220, just like make it nice and round figures. Profit risk margin, so 20%, I want to aim for a profit margin of 20%. Other development costs, 20%. Closing cost, 7%. Then you can update defaults. We go back, put in our minimum lot size here, hit calculate. And we can see now that based off this 809 square meter block, land use efficiency, 80 square meters, 647 uh, of it is usable it estimates four townhouses that can be built on this site. All right, net realization, a little bit over 2.07 million, desired profit of 345, total development costs a little bit over 1.2 mil. So I, to, in order to achieve that, I cannot pay more than $522,798. You can click on view breakdown as well. So if you're looking at selling the, the, the property, it will then incorporate GST as well. So then you'll then work out what your net realization is excluding GST. All right, so it's just got a few extra calculations in there. But this is not a development project management uh, or feasibility um, report. So it doesn't break it down specifically. You know, it, doesn't, it doesn't allow you to work out, okay, what are your subdivision costs? What are your soil tests going to cost you? Uh, build costs, you know, all that sort of stuff you have to do outside of, of Archistar. But this will just give you a quick breakdown of what potentially you should be paying for it based off some assumptions and if the asking price is like 700 grand then you know that you know they're going to drop it by that much so it's just to quickly allow you to go okay i'm going to move on i'm not going to worry about this site all right so the other thing that you can do checking for granny flats so this is really cool so if, let's say i pick this site here again 
there's a button up here called check for granny flat if i click on that it will then actually look at that site and look at the existing dwelling and say whether it's possible and now this is saying high possibility and you can see here it actually even maps out roughly what size you can fit in on the back of this block so we've got the front block there there's the back um, current building size 505 square meters the uh, average second dwelling area is this so potentially 236 square meters that we have available potential rent increase for the total property uh, 120 to 200 a week if we put a granny flat on house value uplift maybe 30 percent so again, this is just all data that's it's, uh, algorithms, and you can see here it's um, you know it's using data from CoreLogic as well as Archistar. So, but it's always you always need to double check with your you know your town planner uh, and your development cons uh, uh, consultants just to make sure uh, whether in fact you can you can do this. Um, so you can download the report. Um, so if you, whenever you see these buttons here, download the report, just click on it, and it will just generate a PDF report for you. So nice and easy, summarizes it for you. And what's happening here? Cancel that. Okay, there we go. All right, so nice little report. This is just a one pager. Okay. All right, so I think let me go to site details. I think that's pretty much it. And then look, there's add lots here, so you can just compare multiple multiple lots of, um, on the same page. But that's basically what real estate investors Archistar version provides. It's just that added extra ability to be able to apply layers, zoning, uh, do a quick feasibility just to see if or what the potential development opportunity is, is for a site that you might be looking at, whether it's off market or, or on market. Okay, hope that's been helpful, guys. So let me just uh, switch back across to my presentation. So there are all the new features and uh, that we have available now through Real Estate Investor. So um, like I said, if you haven't added Archistar on and you wanna give that a try, it's just a casual membership. So whether you are on casual already or you're on a yearly subscription, you can just click on Archistar add-on and um, uh, obviously read through agree to the T's and C's and hit the button and you'll get access or you'll be then invited to set up access. Um, but you can cancel that at any time, so you can use that. Uh, if you want to upgrade to the RP data, just um, again, just uh, get in touch with us, and we can obviously add that on. Um, and depending on when your billing cycle is, you if if you haven't um, uh, activated yet, you may be entitled to just a free sort of um, uh, complimentary period just before your next next billing as well. So if uh, you want to take advantage of that, just just get in touch. All right, so, so far in terms of some of the, the well, all the surveys have come back, here are some of the things that, well, these are the most popular items that seem to pop up um, more frequently than, than others. And I just want to get, I guess, you know, people on tonight, uh, what your feel of these features are, whether they'll be help or if there's anything in particular that, that you like. So the top suggested features that we've had so far, heat maps, you know, for example, showing median price. Um, Identifying the best address on the best street in the best suburb. Capital growth forecasts. So um, I think a few people have said, I'd like to know, you know, suburb A expected to go up 16% in the next five years. All right, so actual specific numbers. Area suburb hotspots. So just more about uh, what areas um, uh, may be growing in the future. Not so much numbers, but um, just uh, the next next area that may take off or may may may, may get some good growth. Uh, radius searches around train stations or schools. So actually um, showing you listings uh, by being doing a radius search. At the moment, we're going to do a radius search by postcode. Uh, show desktop valuations with every listing. So uh, in investor search, actually have the desktop valuation estimate uh, recorded there. Comparison of data for properties saved in watch list. So just, I guess, quickly be able to just compare data uh, between the ones that you've saved. So they were the, the, the most popular features that were suggested. So if there's anything else that guys that you feel uh, you like us to uh, have a look at, please, I encourage you to click on that link, fill in the survey, or just email us at info at realestateinvestor.com.au uh, because we are really getting our, you know, development schedule in, in line at the moment. We want to really work on some things that are going to add more value 
um, in addition to the stuff that we've already done. Now, I'm just going to run a quick poll because a couple of other things popped up as well, not as, uh, uh, I guess, as frequent or as many as those other ones. But I just want to get an idea. I'm going to launch a poll on screen whether any of these other features would be of value. Uh, so you can select more than one answer. So there's not a lot. There's only two there. So I just want to get an idea. So being able to search by a suburb by, you know, you want to get an idea uh, percentage of owner occupies versus renters. You know, only show me those suburbs where at least 60% are owner occupies. And would price gaps between the lower median and higher median be of value? Now, did I launch that poll? Yes, I did. Okay, great. So if you just want to put in your response to those two, and I'll close that off now. All right, so <laughs> looks like they're quite popular. Well, definitely uh, among uh, everyone on tonight. So uh, look, 71% for both. So uh, okay, so I'll def we'll definitely uh, have a look at those two um, uh, as well. I mean, the price gap one was talked about. We did mention that sort of before we even ran a survey and had some feedback of something that we were actually looking at. We do have a report at the moment called some of the biggest price gap, um, but uh, we want to be able to add more or add more value and build on that, uh, that data. Okay, fantastic guys. Thank you for that. Let me just close that. All right, well, that's basically it. So I'm a bit ahead of time. But I hope that's been useful. I hope that live demo was useful in terms of just showing you around where all those uh, new filters and um, add-ons are all located. But I'll open the floor up to any questions that you might have. Now, I think I've got a couple that have come through. Uh, just, on a, just on last question about councils, will you be able to provide what restrictions council may have? Uh, for example, uh, height restrictions in the area, et cetera. Uh, yeah, so there is a height restrictions is uh, available through Archistar. So if you've got that added on, um, it, it will give you actually what the maximum building height is for that lot. Uh, but uh, or are you talking about more of a, of a general point of view for the whole area? So if you just confirm that for me, Charlie, and I can I can obviously yeah try and answer that a little bit better. But I hope that yeah I hope that sort of answers your question. Uh, capital growth forecast looks like a good one. Okay, fantastic. Thanks, Philip. All right, so nothing else has come through. Uh, can we have a radius search in 10 kilometer intervals up to until 100 kilometers? Yes, uh, that would be an easy one. Um, I think I think actually may have uh, picked that up in in the survey as well, uh, Philip. So uh, yeah, look, um, definitely on the list. That will probably be one of the easiest ones for us to do. Just you know, just adding extra filters uh, or options to an existing filter. So, yeah, appreciate that one, uh, Philip. Uh, Charlie just come back. Yes, type of restriction types of restrictions council may have on developments. Yeah, look, we'll we'll, we'll, ex we'll explore that further, Charlie. We'll see if we can get that um, uh, information. I mean, look, if it's if it's available through council um, on the you know planning maps and on their actual. Uh, um, uh, pages that they make available, then we should be able to pull that through. So, I mean, like I said, at the moment we do have height restrictions, but it's based on the specific site, which I think is going to be more useful anyway, because if you're looking at a general level, you're going to have to look at that site anyway, because that site could be next to something that is, you know, there could be an easement or something on there, or a caveat or something on there that prevents that particular site. So, uh, but yeah, definitely we'll, uh, we can, we can have a look to see if we can add any more value there. All right, so if there's any other questions, guys, feel free to type that in. I might just um, stay on for a couple more seconds to see if anything comes through, but I hope that's been useful. Um, now, we do, while I wait for any questions, um, next week uh, we will be running another webinar with Archistar. Uh, they're going to just sort of step through and give everyone a bit more of a, um, I guess, tutorial or training uh, on how to use the platform, explain a few filters, sort of take it from a start to finish type of uh, demo. 
So uh, yeah, keep an eye out for the registrations on that and feel free to come along. Yes, this is being recorded. So um, you'll be able to access this from your membership. You'll be able to log in and I think we're gonna put it on actually one of the front tiles. Um, I'll just quickly show you guys. So when you log in, scroll down, I think we're gonna actually update this webinar tile it's quite it's 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 yeah it's out of date now so we'll, we'll, we'll update that uh, otherwise if it's not there will be a knowledge base so we are going through a process at the moment guys we're going to be updating the website um obviously with a lot of new features we've uh, got to just update some of the the video tutorials and things like that so bear with us but okay, obviously any questions at all if you need support the 1300 number support email all down the bottom here feel free to get in touch and yeah look our guys are usually pretty good we'll We'll respond to you within one business day at the uh, the latest, but we're usually pretty quick anyway. Okay, guys. Well, doesn't look like anything's coming. Any other questions have come through? So, uh, look, thank you so much. I hope that's been um, of value. If you uh, obviously want to take advantage of any of the uh, new uh, add-ons like RP Data or Archistar, just uh, obviously click through to the relevant area or get in touch with us, and uh, we can definitely help you action that tomorrow. But uh, other than that, thank you again for joining me tonight. I um, hope that's been useful and uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of your night and perhaps I'll look forward to seeing you on one of our future webinars. So until then, uh, good luck and uh, take care.